girl. Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review. I thought long and hard about this book. I thought, should I do a review of this? What are the life lessons in this book? Are there any life lessons for me, a female of a certain age, reading Philip Roth and especially The Dying Animal? Well, the irony is not lost to me that I'm sitting here in my very feminine top that has been crocheted, reviewing bloody Philip Roth, The Dying Animal, a disturbing masterpiece. Okay, where do I start with this book? Hmm, I'll start with something a lot easier. You might be thinking, well, why did you choose the book? Well, okay, I think I've told you in videos on this channel that the way I choose books in the library I wouldn't recommend it. I go through like this with my finger and whenever I recognize a name or even if I don't recognize a name or if, if the spine looks interesting, I'll pick it out. This time round, I recognize the name Roth and I thought, I know that name, Philip Roth. I'll read his book. So I took out this book and I should have recognized that this book was obviously well read. Look at the spine. Look how many people would have read this book it's nearly going to fall apart when i pick out books from the library sometimes i don't even read the back i just go the dying animal philip roth pulitzer prize winner okay i should read that i didn't read the back did i and boy was there an onslaught of things that was a real eye-opener let's let's just say that okay so part of me thought to myself oh, should i review this book or is it wrong of me to review this book or how can I review this book as a woman when it is all about a virile man aging? But the thing is, don't they tell us that we should actually read books that get us walking into other people's shoes so we can really understand what they're going through? I have been reading a lot of books from the female perspective of aging and going through life and facing mortality. And But I had never, I had never, never read a book from the male perspective boy was that a surprise it was a good surprise in some way because it was good not the topic itself or how he wrote about it it was good in the sense that i now read it and i can ask these questions to my husband who's going to get a lot of questions from me about whether it is really like that <laughs> Oh, he's better. He better hold on to his hat. Okay, let's start first with obviously I told you how I found this book. I just picked it out of the library and I should have known better by the way of how well read it was that it was going to be a very popular book, but it was a very confronting book for me. It is about David Kapesh. David Kapesh, this is the third book. I didn't realize that it was part of a trilogy. And let me just say I'm not going to go back to read the other two. David Kapesh is a 62 year old professor at a college at a university and he's recounting his version of events to someone and he's recounting the version of events of how he came across Consuela, a 24 year old student in his class. But let's backtrack a bit about who this David Kapesh character is. He's 62 years old. He's a virile, very virile, very, very, very virile man who obviously has uh, a lot of lust a lot of sexual desire obviously in his age so it must be a thing that obviously men don't lose their sexual desire in their own <laughs> that was a, that was an eye opener anyway let's go back to that anyway he loves sex and he loves sex with his student and he loves no tie sex he's he's a free man he doesn't have any commitments he doesn't have a wife he's divorced her he doesn't have girlfriends because he loves the loose and free love well yeah sex mainly lust and he picks out students from his class now i had an issue with that long and we're gonna kind of leave that aside the way he does it though is actually quite i wouldn't say sinister yeah it's this sinister he picks them out in class and they're all young and nubile 20 plus but he has a method to how he does that his method is he waits till after the exam after the assessments he has a party at his place he gets them drunk and usually you know students hang around they stay around to early hours and you know one thing leads to another bang he'll have sex with them he, ha he has that method of being able to bypass the harassment laws and and things like that at the university so he meets consuela in his classroom and he picks her out and she's a 24 year old cuban 
young student who is studying to try and get better in her life. She dresses differently, she's a lot more worldly, she has had experience in life as being a, a secretary and he latches on to her, he asks her out, one thing leads to another, they start to have a relationship. Now David Kapesh is a minor celebrity. The way he talks about him being a minor celebrity, I just kind of roll my eyes when I was reading and I'm thinking yeah, you're an influencer in your own head, in your own, a legend in your own lunchbox, aren't you? But you know, you had to, I had to kind of stop rolling my eyes when I would read passages of it because I felt as if he was, he was mansplaining. Here we go. So he was a minor celebrity. Uh, he was in the papers and Consuela felt that she didn't need the local town to actually know that she was in a relationship with him. So they kept a secret relationship, which was totally, totally fine with Kapesh as you would glean. Anyway, he becomes obsessed by her. This obsession, uh, he kind of reduces her to this one body piece because he keeps talking and going on and on and on about her breasts. But throughout the book, he starts to lecture us about his perspective of the right of him as an aging male to still love anyone he wants, have sex with anyone he wants in the way he wants. He's someone who doesn't have any ties, who doesn't have any commitments, and all he wants is just to have his life, to have his music, and to have sex with whoever, whoever he wants. He lectures us by sharing the story of his son, who is a 42-year-old man, who also has issues of his own. He is in a marriage that he doesn't like and doesn't want. He has got a girlfriend on the side who, who he loves, and he's trying to get out of his marriage and into a commitment with his new girlfriend. And this is where David Kapesh is telling us about where he thinks his son is going wrong because his son is actually jumping into one commitment from another commitment. And why do you have to show commitment and attachment and have these societal expectations to love when all he could be doing is just bonking this woman, not going into down the commitment sense. But his son has a level of conscious, a guilty conscious about what that means and how he should be uh, having this relationship. Throughout the book, Kapesh is actually telling his perspective of the right of man to to have sex whenever and with whomever he wants without ties, without relationship, without a conscience. It was kind of weird in some way because to me, it was more about power. He didn't want to lose his power and he equated this sexual desire with power and yet at the, at the same time, he allowed himself to be obsessed by Consuela to the point that he was doing some things to her. And I'm not going to say it here because the moment I read what he did with her, I just kind of rolled my eyes and I said, what a fuckwit. You know why? Because, excuse the language, he basically allowed himself to become powerless in that act. He allowed himself to become submissive. The very thing that he was saying that he's not and didn't want to be in his marriage. He was doing in some other ways throughout his relationship with Consuela. There were also other parts and stories that he would weave in about his friend George and what George would do, and this is what I found actually quite confronting in some way. Not what he would do to Consuela, but also how he recounted the story of how George in his dying days in a hospital bed, what he did with his wife in front of others. And he explained that as, you know, sexual desire right to the very end, that a male will always have this desire at the expense of destroying everyone else around him right to the very end. And it was really interesting to read it from the point of view of a female, because I kept thinking to myself, is this is this the masculine perspective of it? Why haven't we heard more about it? And I started to think to myself, he's got every right to feel that way. I mean, if that is what he is feeling, then, and he thinks that is right, who am I to come in with my own judgment, and my own perspective, and to say, well, that's wrong? Maybe the fact that he had written it down this way, this is his perspective. And so therefore I shouldn't be so quick to judge. But I did 
roll my eyes in a lot of the passages in the book and that was I guess part of me feeling that at times I was lectured to I was mansplained and yes you can have your sexual desire by all means have your sexual desire but there are certain lines that are crossed around the morality around how you do things and how you find these young women and then I'll, on the other hand I would think well these women went into this relationship of their own accord so therefore why would I question that this book was really very interesting in the sense that it made me think a lot about I guess my own perspective and also thinking shit you know is this how males think the aging male a virile aging male who is facing his own mortality and is facing the loss of sexual desire i actually kind of felt sorry for them in some way <laughs> i know it's weird but at the same time not sorry for them in the sense that you you fall into your own traps he, he came across as a very tacky a very arrogant character that i simply didn't connect with but at the same time he had every right to i guess express what he wanted to express in the manner that he expressed it just meant that i didn't have to agree with it it was something that i definitely didn't agree with it because he struck me as a really pathetic character especially because he would reduce the women down to a you know a particular body part like he did with consuela consuela on the other hand was an interesting character and again i'm not going to say that you know yes she you know she had every right to be that way but she did on the other hand she too was also using her power and so it was a kind of i'm not going to say it was all his fault they both were using the relationship for their own means and ends so therefore who am i to pass judgment on it you know he he would say the Kepesh character would say that he didn't want any ties or any attachment and yet he came obsessed with Consuela so obsession to me is the the worst form of attachment it's the worst kind he he started to delude himself that he was above it all and yet he was it he did this one act in the book which i won't explain here but when you read the book and for those of you who read it know what i'm talking about this one act was total submission and he didn't understand it he didn't get it he didn't recognize it for what it is in some way i felt david kapesh is a little bit deluded i found him as a pathetic old man who was actually quite delusional uh, his theories about you know justifying his behaviors came across as a bit <laughs> idiotic at times i had to laugh i had to laugh i was laughing through this book i'm just kind of rolling my eyes but at the same time it opened me up to this idea of the aging male and a very aging male and how sad it must be that over time the loss of sexual desire which doesn't get lost but the fact that he is aging uh he's not the man that he used to be on the outside you know you start to realize that of the genders we're all as humans going through some kind of mortality and we're facing our own death and we're facing what it means to age in our own way but i didn't i guess <laughs> man <laughs> I didn't connect to this character at all. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Look, I'd be interested in the females out there who have read this book. What were your thoughts? I'm going to leave it at that because I don't know how else to end this. Have I stopped reading Philip Roth? No, by all means, no. It was just weird that I happened to read this book, his 29th book, and he was about the same age, maybe a bit older when he wrote wrote this book to the author, uh, to the character in this book i have read indignation and which is my net novel which i'm going to review this is also a good one and one that i keep keep thinking about but that'll come in my next review so hope you enjoyed the dying animal by philip roth thank you for listening and thank you for watching bye for now